Greetings, I'm Don the Crown, and welcome to Patch Notes TLDR, where I break down the patch notes quickly and concisely. If you'd like to skip ahead, there are timestamps in the description below. Let's start off with the nerfs. Elemental hit jewels have been changed slightly to make it so that you lose 50% of the damage that is converted. This comes out to be a 33% damage nerf for the conversion variance of this build, which doesn't kill it. This nerf has zero effect on non-conversion elemental hit builds. Traps. Base trap throwing time has been increased to 0.6 seconds from 0.5 seconds. Multiple trap support will also cause the traps to do 10% less damage than it did before, and cluster traps will now only throw two additional traps instead of three. Minefield support will have 15% less damage than before. Shield charge has been reworked so that local attack speed mods don't affect the travel time of the skill. To put it simply, you won't be using a bright beak in your caster builds to travel fast anymore. Alternative options are a 3 green prismatic eclipse or a wind slash, but they won't be as good as bright beak was. Sunder has had its overall length reduced by 20% and its base explosion radius reduced from 16 to 15. This radius also grows slower. This all said, Sunder should be just fine to level with. Despite the nerfs, the damage remains the same, which means Sunder should remain a great skill to level with. Kinetic Blast's area damage has been reduced and the explosion placement has been reworked. While this skill will still work fine for pack clearing, the single target wall shenanigans have likely been removed completely. Next up, the buffs. Some skills have had some minor tweaks. Dominating Blow, Static Strike, and Caustic Arrow all got reworked. While the strength of Dominating Blow and Static Strike will depend on a few factors yet to be seen, the changes to Caustic Arrow might make it the new go-to solo leveling skill, as the new level 20 damage over time is equal to the old level 29 version of the skill. Fire, Lightning, Ice, and Explosive Traps have all received around 40% increased damage to compensate for some of the trap nerfs. Fire Nova Mine also received a 25% damage boost. Flame Dash will now cast faster, travel farther, and regain charges quicker as it levels. It may have nearly no cooldown at max level and quality. Lightning Warp has been buffed to have a reduced duration at level 1 but it still seems like you'll want to link it to less duration to make it feel good. Earthquake Aftershock has been buffed from 50% more damage to 70%. Despite this, I don't see it making a big comeback due to its delayed damage nature. Next, let's go into some of the changes. Block has been reworked in a big way. Where there used to be sources of block to spell block conversion, this has been changed to flat spell block chance. The sole exception being Gladiator's Versatile Combatant, which will set your spell block equal to your attack block. Some skills have been adjusted to become instant and can be used while moving. These include War Cries, when made instant by passives, auras, and blasphemy curses. Other skills such as Righteous Fire, Blood Rage, and Phase Run have been reported to be instant now as well. Next, the new skills. There are two categories here, things we've seen already and the new stuff. The three new skills revealed here are Consecrated Path, Summon Holy Relic, and Vol Ancestral Warchief. Consecrated Path looks like it might have some potential as a somewhat controlled flicker strike. However, the range of the teleport has yet to be revealed. Summon Holy Relic looks like a great support minion for builds that attack and have minions that might need healing. I expect to see this used with Dominating Blow and Smite minion builds. Vol Ancestor Warchief seems okay and good for big burst, but most builds are probably going to prefer Vol Double Strike instead, especially if you can't have your normal totem active while this one is up. Skills we've already seen in previous reveals include Smite, Herald of Purity, Herald of Agony, Toxic Arrow, Toxic Rain, Vicious Projectiles, and Withering Touch. 
Smite is a lightning melee attack that provides a lightning damage buff to nearby allies. Herald of Purity provides flat physical damage and some minions to assist. Herald of Agony provides chance to poison and a new minion that gets more or less powerful depending on how many times you've poisoned recently. Scourge Arrow charges up a shot, which releases a bunch of pods that explode. However, GGG has stated that they are reworking this skill, so maybe skip for now. Toxic Rain appears to be similar to Rain of Arrows with a slowing and damage over time component. This skill would likely feel like a cross between Rain of Arrows and Caustic Arrow. I'm not sure that this will be considered strong for mapping, but it could be great for delving. Only time will tell. Vicious Projectiles is the new name for physical projectile attack damage support. This support will boost physical damage and both physical and chaos damage over time at the cost of attack speed. This seems like a good candidate for Caustic Arrow and Toxic Rain. Lastly, Withering Touch. Supported skills gain physical damage as extra chaos damage and have a chance to wither the target on hit. Each stack of wither makes the enemy take 6% more chaos damage. Zana has been reworked and her missions will be different. Some of her map mods also require you to progress in her quest line to use. The Shaper will also claim maps as strongholds, and completing these maps will grant considerable loot. This all should help make progressing through the Atlas faster than ever before. Well that's it for my quick rundown. I'll link the full patch notes below if you want to read through them all. My goal here was to just hit the big bullet points quickly. If you want, you can catch me live at twitch.tv slash dontheCrown. I'll be starting this league with a big team push to hit level 100 in 3 days.